What's going on everybody? This Afro Think Tank. Today is going to be different. Story time. Because I tell you guys that, you know, when it comes to this Africa and this French thing that I know, I pretty much kind of know what they're going to do. And because I've kind of done it, you know, you know, I kind of did some stuff like that when I was in the Marine Corps. It was a part of a unit that did that. You know, I'm going to get put a little context behind it so you guys can get where I'm coming from. Because I keep telling y'all, I've been living in the real world since I was 17 years old, right? <clears throat> so, here's the story. So, it's, uh, I'm headed to Afghanistan. I'm part of the 22nd Mew Expeditionary Unit, Special Operations. So, we had a goal. We was going to Afghanistan, and we had 15, 15 targets. 15 targets that we needed to eliminate, all right? And uh, so we had a list, right, with 15 targets we had to eliminate. And we also had to coordinate with other groups on the ground. So we get to Afghanistan, we get to our forward operating base, which is way to hell in boom hickey, dumb, dumb, dumb ass freaking boondocky Afghanistan. I'm talking, we in the mountains, high as shit, right? And it's just us, it's probably about maybe a couple hundred of us at the point. My platoon was the first one to get there. So we landed because I was a, uh, I was 81 millimeter mortarman. I was also a trap team of tactical recovery of aircraft and crew. Basically, you know, Tears of the Sun with Bruce Willis. When he was an African, they had to go get those people. That's what I did, right? That's why I knew that mission was bullshit because ain't no way. They would, ain't no way. No mili We would have dropped in the, in, the, in the forest and not know there was a thousand goddamn rebels, brigade, brigades of troops. And that's just, that was just for the movies. But <clears throat> so in Afghanistan, one day we went on this patrol. First, our base that we landed was outside of a city, outside of the city of a Taliban warlord. Okay. Now people seem to think the Taliban is one big glob, big group, but in actuality, there's different bands of Taliban, right? <clears throat> and all the Taliban people don't like each other. And keep in mind, it was America who created the Taliban in a proxy war to fight Russia, right? The same way we armed, uh, we arm Ukrainian to fight Russia. We've been arming people to fight Russia in several countries. Afghanistan was one of them. So we armed them. We, uh, it was a student-led group. And we armed them and we gave them weapons and training and all that stuff. So I'm over here. There's a warlord who has a palace in the village, right? And we're right outside of the village because that's where we're going to camp so we can go get these uh, 15 people that we came to get. You know, so a lot of our lieutenants actually stayed at the palace in the Taliban palace where the Taliban the base in the middle of the village okay they were there right living and staying in the palace with the Taliban all right keep in mind now we have Taliban we have Al Qaeda and we have various other groups that some are called Isis and ISIL and you got all sorts of different names that you guys never even heard of there's a whole bunch of factions of Afghanistan all right and so we're there the DEA is there I went, yo, the DEA was deep. They was deep. They was, I was like, God damn. It was, I'm telling you, there's some spicy stuff going on because there's a lot of hair on over there. And I used to put heroin. I used to put the poppy seeds in my helmet. <laughs> I mean, we, it was everywhere. I mean, heroin is everywhere in Afghanistan. I mean, needless to say, the whole battalion didn't get a drug test for at least two two years when we got back. Trust and believe. Because they do, you know, not that dip. Y'all know how them, you know, they do that dip, that tobacco. We're over there in Afghanistan. They actually put heroin in that shit. And, you know, the white boys, they was. They said, let me try that. And then they were like, let me try that. You know, and they would do a swap, cultural exchange, right? But anyway, so there's one day we had to go on a mission to, I don't know what the hell we was doing, but I was a section leader. So we went to the palace, right? So we went to the palace, they opened the doors up and here comes this guy, and I swear this is this is what's really happened. The war leader, the, the warlord comes out. I'm sitting here, I got my weapon. I'm sitting there, we're about to go on this fucking long ass patrol and shit. These patrols last like two days, yo. Like these some long ass patrols. You and fifteen of fifteen yo your closest buddies about to go to Bumpicky anywhere. Y'all about to walk somewhere and go do something for for two days, right? So we get there because the 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 Taliban dude had beef with another Taliban dude. So we were like, yeah, what we gonna do while we going out? They didn't want us to kill his Taliban fighters. So he was like, somebody came up with a great idea to have them come along with us. Right, so I was in charge of three Taliban fighters myself, right? And we, we looked at their weapons. They had AK-47s. They were all messed up, beat up. So we fixed their weapons, cleaned their weapons, made sure their weapons worked right, and we took them along on patrol with us, right? We were hunting for other Taliban 
you know, people or Al Qaeda because the Taliban don't like Al Qaeda. Al Qaeda don't like Taliban. ISIS don't like Taliban. They don't. None of these guys like each other. Okay, so I take the Taliban. I'm on patrol, and I'm in my mind. I'm thinking, hold up, hold, hold the hell up. I'm I'm on patrol with the Taliban, and I'm, I'm going. You know, I'm 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 young, right? I'm I'm just like, wow, okay, that's what we doing, right? So I'm walking. First of all, these Taliban, I see why they get killed because they have no discipline or training. All they do is smoke weed. They would smoke weed the whole time. And I was like, bruh, you know, I'm speaking to them because we had to learn a little Pashtun because that's what they spoke, right? They're not Arabic. These people don't like, all of them don't like to be called Arabic. They, they have their own thing. So we're on patrol with the Taliban, taking them so they can help us go find, you know, some people on the hit list, right? And so we went out there. And I, I just could not trust these guys. I'm like, man, I'm, I'm literally, I got these guys to my left, right? I'm in charge of them. I got three. My home, other homeboy got three. My other homeboy got three. And so we take them out. This is a 20, this is a 48 hour patrol. So we go out here and these dudes are smoking weed. Every time we do a security halt, they take those turbans. They lay them things out like a, they're having a picnic. They're playing cards. They got their little ham radios and they're smoking their weed and they're playing games. They stack rocks on top of each other. Who can get the rock? Who can put rocks on top of each other the highest before it falls or whatever? That's the thing. You'll see that shit everywhere. Just random rocks stacked on top of each other in Afghanistan. And at that moment, I realized there's a lot of politics involved here. You know, the Taliban themselves, <laughs> the Taliban themselves was a, is kind of like a governmental organization that the media kind of lets, makes you think that they're just some random people in the, in the mountains that just want to do this and do that. No, these people, these people are propped up by us, right? That's why the Taliban that you see now, that take over, we, we allowed that to happen because in order to get the Taliban to come from in the mountains, the ones we don't like to get from in the mountains to get to where we can see them, we just say you're in charge and we let them go to the, to the, to the capital where they have to now govern the country. But see what's happening now is our special operators are training other groups, right? In the mountains, in Pakistan and various other different places to disrupt the Taliban that we allowed to stay in control because if you want to really get somebody if you know where he is every day because he got a schedule then bam it's easier to, 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 to catch him if he's right there rather than having to chase this dude in the mountains right oh yeah by the way we had 15 we get all them we got all them dudes and like it took us like two weeks to get all of them we got every single one on the hit list that's how I know we had to know where Osama bin Laden was like we had to I was right on the border of Pakistan I was I, we were all there like there's no way like we had to know that I'm convinced that we knew is no way you can't hide from us like a, a six foot something redhead Arab dude no no or or, or posh two dude no way because them guys are small over there but anyway once I realized that there's a lot of different politics and nuance and it's not just just patriotic Americans versus the terrorist and da 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 no there's a lot involved guys we was over there training the Taliban to fight we were giving them equipment we were making them capable force because we knew that the government that was already in charge that we had previously propped up, they weren't strong enough to hold on to the country. We knew that. That's why we were stuck in Afghanistan because we just because the, the, the government that we trained, the, the Afghan military that we were training, and they also was going on patrol with us, too. We took the Afghan police with us. We trained the Afghan police. We trained the Afghan military. We even created new militias and we trained them. Went on patrol with them. Every time we got in a firefight, these dudes go run off in the goddamn run off behind some damn rocks while we had to do all the goddamn work walk damn damn fucking killing and shit right they would run off we had to do all the work like these guys didn't have no metal you understand because there's no like patriotism there there's no patriot they don't they don't see themselves as one big glob a group there's just a lot of factions trying to take control of an area that's just that's just really good for growing heroin and weed there's a lot of weed there. oh my god weed and heroin is like the only thing that grows there right I'm telling you, it's all about heroin because Afghanistan grows heroin. Uh, I think Cambodia and Southeast Asia, there's some places that grow our heroin. And lo and behold, those are the places we go to war. Uh, Vietnam, Cambodia, heroin. Afghanistan, heroin. All right. I all think we get all this shit. <laughs> but yeah, so I've personally been on patrol with the so-called enemy Taliban looking for other Taliban and looking for Al Qaeda. See, Taliban, they don't blow themselves up they're a political organization they're not really as fundamental as you think even though they are very fundamental everybody in Afghanistan is like that so you're not we weren't there to liberate or save anybody because everybody everybody treats women like shit they're all the regular people the women ain't nothing but dogs they were less than dogs women are less than dogs like they are less than they, they don't have no rights 
They ain't, they never had nothing. And that made me question myself, like, why? I thought we were here to liberate Afghanistan from the Taliban. But I'm like, well, shit, they all the same. Whether it's the Taliban is in charge or whether it's the, the, the other uh, Afghanis in charge, they all treat the women like shit. They all don't really value education like that. I mean, they all got the same exact issue. It's just who is going to give America what they want? That's the question. America don't care who's in charge. Oh, yeah, by the way, after we finish using that warlord, this is the, this is the crazy part. I got sorry, I got that light. After we finish with that warlord, we actually captured him and took his ass to go Guantanamo Bay. And his brother, which was another warlord, got all upset and shit and was like, try to petition to the United States. Oh, we helped you, blah, 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 blah. And you're just going to come and take our brother because we don't give a, cause America don't give a shit. America is a straight Death Star gangster. After we used him, let our officers and stay in his palace, took his, 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 his troops on patrol with us. We, after we were done with him, we just said, all right, we're done with you. We're going to scoop you up and send you to Guantanamo Bay. And we just kept it mush. We did everything we needed to do in Afghanistan. We did it real fast to the point where Geraldo came, said, hey, y'all doing such a great job. Y'all should stay. And then that became a great idea. And I ended up staying there like eight fucking months. That shit was next level. Right. But all I'm saying is I told that story just to say. I know what's really happening. I know what they say on TV, but then I know what's happening in real life. Most of the stuff you see on TV is just entertainment. It's all propaganda. So, so you can believe what it is that they want you to believe so that your sentiment about it, you know, does it affect them, in, you know, when they make the decisions to do what they got to do for American interests. Right. And so that the people who do make the decision to make the votes can still get can get voted in because if you're supporting it then that means when it comes for election time and it's time for them the same senators and congressmen who signed off to go to war who signed off to have any type of military expedition they'll still get voted in and stay in power nobody wants to sacrifice their political career for international uh interest for america's interest nobody wants to do that so america has to be on their side when it comes to going to war right so yeah i'm telling you and that's just that's just one story i, I can't there's a lot of shit i got a lot of stories so when I, that's why I'm so serious and I'm like, y'all just don't know, like this shit is easy. Like this, the, the, the shit we deal with in America, the, the, the struggles we got here, you know, even the women, they, they feel like they've been discriminated. Uh, y'all don't know what discrimination is, uh, uh, like far as like modern day, like the shit that I seen over there, I couldn't believe that human beings still treat each other like that. Like is this equi is equivalent to what white people did to us. I'm gonna say that, I'm, I'm not even gonna do it. It's equivalent to that now, over there, right now. In the Arab world, man. So it's a whole thing over there. But anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. I just wanted to give y'all a little bit of my uh, receipts, tell you a small little story, just so y'all can understand where I'm coming from. When I say, hey, I know what I'm talking about. When I'm talking about this overseas shit, when I'm talking about how America rolls, you know, we gangsters. Look, every powerful nation is a gangsters. I'm not condemning America for the things that they do. You know, every powerful nation, every powerful king, every powerful empire are tyrants to somebody throughout history there's never been a king arthur that shit is a fantasy all right in order to be on top you got to do some shit and that's just the nature of the beast okay anyway that's all i got to say it's afro think tank learn some teach them i'm out